Hey guys, welcome to another Flutter tutorial video. My name is Tensor. Today we're going to be looking at quite a few different concepts. We're going to be looking at drawers, we're going to be looking at hero animations, and we're going to be looking at adding photographs to our application as well as creating applications that use multiple different files. Alright, so let's get started here. In this new application, I've created a folder called images and inside of it I have a photo of a kangaroo. We need to make sure that Flutter knows that this image exists, so we go to the pubspec yaml file. In the generated code, you'll notice that they have examples of how to bring in different assets. For instance, they show you how to bring in images here and they show you how to bring in different fonts here. Because we're just bringing in images, we're just going to come down to the bottom here and we're going to type in assets colon and then we want to type in the path to the image that we want to bring in. If we had multiple images we would put multiple different list items and then we would put in the paths like this. In our case we just have the one kangaroo.jpg so we just put it in images backslash kangaroo.jpg. Okay so now we can come back into our application and we want to build out the skeleton for this application. So I've just created a material app with a scaffold in it and then the body is just a center with an image.asset that points towards our images kangaroo.jpg. We can compile the application and just take a look and see what the image looks like embedded inside of our app. Just a white screen with the image sitting inside of it. So what we're going to do is cut out the scaffold and the image and everything. Just remove that entire part and our home will point towards an object called home. We also want to add a second property into our material app front end and that is the routes property. This takes in a map with a string and then a widget builder. And we'll actually build out this map probably as the last thing we do for this application. So now let's create our pages. So I've created a folder called pages and I've put in a file called home.dart. And inside of this file we've imported flutter material.dart. And this will bring in all of the flutter stuff that we need for this particular page. We can make a simple home page. Home page extends stateless widget and then our build function returns a scaffold with an app bar and then we have a container with a center and our image in the middle. So this will be fundamentally the same as the app that we had before except now we have it over two different pages. If we jump back into our main.dart file you'll notice that we're importing package hero underscore drawer pages home.dart. The package name is the name of this application and then of course the path to the home.dart file that we want to bring in here. If we compile this you can see now we have an app bar but everything else is pretty much the same. We want to build out two more pages, one called accounts.dart and the other one called settings.dart and we'll come back to those in a moment but we just want to build out those files at least. Because our home page is going to have our drawer inside of it we need to refactor it into a stateful widget and like always we'll just override our create state function and then we'll have it point to another class where our state will reside. We're going to create a new function called build drawer and this will return a drawer, the drawer being the widget type that we want to return from this function. First we'll define the drawer header, we'll create a variable called header and we'll point it towards a new drawer header object with a child of text header inside of it. Next we want to create what is called an about list tile. This allows us to essentially put a bunch of about information into our drawer as its own page and it will sort of pop up like its own pop-up box. We can give it a child with a text that says about screen. Then we can give it the application name property. So I just put in a string that says hero and drawer example. And then we can fill out the rest of this by putting in an application version and I'll make this version 0.1.0 and then application icon which is the icon that signifies this application. I just chose the hourglass empty and then we have the icon itself which is the icon that you click on to bring up this page. So the icon will just show the icon.info icon and this will be right next to the text that says about screen. So the button to open this up on the drawer will say about screen. It will have this little icon for info next to it and then you click on it and it opens up this screen with the information in it. 
Inside of our build drawer function, we're going to create another function that returns a list tile. These list tiles are the elements that we're going to be making our drawer out of. We create a function where we pass in the icon, the string, which will be the label, and then the route as a string representation of the route that we want to go to when we click the button. Each of our list tiles will have a simple format. We'll have what's called a leading icon. So this icon will sit on the left side and then we'll have the text on the right side of that. And then when we tap it, we want to be able to execute this anonymous function here. The on tap function will call our set state function. And then inside of it, we will execute some navigator functions, which will allow us to change the route of our application. First, we'll pop out the route, which is our home route, and then we will push in the name that we're passing in as a string. This way, it will close the home page and then open up the page that we want to go to. After this function, we then want to create a list item that will contain our header and then each of our nav items and then our about item. Our nav list will take on this format. We'll have our header and then we'll call our build nav item. We'll pass in icons.home and then a label of home and then our home route. We'll do the same for settings. So icons.settings, settings, and then the settings route. And then we want to do the same for account, icons.account balance wallet, account, and then account as a route. And then after we want to put in our about item. We'll then instantiate a new list view with our nav list inside of it. List view with children. And then we just put nav list directly inside of that. And then finally, we'll have a return element, which will be a drawer and we'll put in the list view. So this is all one big function that returns this drawer element and basically creates the drawer for us. Now let's create our build function for our home screen. Our home screen will be fairly simple. We'll just return a scaffold with an app bar. The title will just say hero drawer app, and then we'll have a container with a center inside of it. Inside of our center, we create our hero. We give it a tag so that it can stay consistent across each of the pages. The tag will just be kangaroo. And then inside of it, we'll have our image asset pointing towards our kangaroo image. We also want to add our drawer to this scaffold. So we just come down to the bottom here and we put in drawer and then we call our function which will return our drawer element which is our build drawer function and we pass in our context. Now that we've gotten this far, let's talk about heroes. A hero widget is a widget that flies between screens. So in other words, the idea behind this application is to create a animation that sort of maintains our kangaroo image between the screens that we go to. So from the home screen, we'll have our kangaroo image as the normal kangaroo box that we had. And then when we go to say our account screen, maybe we'll turn it into an oval shape. And then when we go to our settings screen, maybe we'll make it bigger or smaller. And the idea is that the image will look like it's actually transitioning from one page to another rather than being re-rendered. This is what's called a hero animation or a shared element transition. To get all of this set up, we want to build out our accounts and our settings pages, and we want to add our hero to those pages as well. Naturally, on both of these pages, we want to import our package fluttermaterial.dart file, and the widgets in these pages can be stateless widgets because we have no state to maintain. For our account page, we'll return a scaffold and we'll give it an app bar with text that says account page. Then our body will have a container, with a center inside of it. And then because we want to make our heroes smaller, we're going to put a sized box inside of our center. A sized box is a widget that allows us to create a fixed sized box. So in this case, we're gonna give it a width of 100 pixels. So the box itself will be automatically fixed to 100 pixels. Inside of this, we'll create our hero. And naturally we need to give it the tag of the other hero, which is just the string kangaroo. Now we want the image to actually change shape. So we're going to use what's called a clip oval widget as well. And we'll talk about clips more in a later tutorial, but just think of it as an oval shaped widget. Inside of our clip oval, we need to put our kangaroo image. So we just add that as a child. 
For our settings page, we can more or less copy what we had with our account page, except change the class name to settings, and then the text in the app bar to settings. Inside of our settings page, we're going to create our sized box again, but this time we'll give it a width of 400 pixels. We'll put our child inside of it, and of course we want to add the tag so it knows exactly what it's referring to. And then inside of this, we want to add what's called a clip R rect, which is a clip rounded rectangle. This makes it so that we'll have rounded corners on our rectangle. And again, inside of this, we want to point the child towards our image.asset with the image kangaroo inside of it. All right, so we've got our home page, our accounts page, and our settings page all figured. Now we need to jump back into our main.dart file, and we need to set up the routes so that we can actually navigate between our pages. To do this, we just import from our pages folder, settings and accounts. And remember, you can just put in package the name of the application, and then the route to the file that you want to import. You can also import these files using an absolute route, but I prefer to use the package keyword instead. And to actually set up these routes, we just want to set up our map. So we have our route name, which is a string, and then we have a widget builder function, which takes in our build context and then outputs the widget. And the settings route, for instance, points towards the settings class, and then the account route will point towards our account class. Okay, so now we can build out this application and take a look at what we have. All right, so here's our application and we're on the home page. You can see we have our square picture and if we click this hamburger menu up here, this will open up our drawer. You can see our drawer has home, settings, account, and then the about screen. If we go to the about screen, it opens up this little box which has the name of the application and the version number. And we can even click view licenses which will lead us to another page. We can then go to one of our other pages. So say we wanna to go to settings, we just click settings. And I had a minor error when I tried to go to the settings page because I didn't set up the border radius inside of our clip rounded rectangle. So in here, I just put in the border radius property and then I put in border radius circular with two pixels on the radius. So now we can reload the application and we can now go to settings. We can then go back to home. We can also then go to account and you can see that the image shrinks to a circle and then if we hit the arrow back, it will then increase back to a square. And notice that when we hit the arrow back, it actually becomes a square before it regains its size. And this is part of what creates the illusion that the image is actually not being re-rendered over each of the pages. All right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, feel free to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the box below. And if you dislike this video, then by all means, download it as much as you like. Have a good day.